Peace to you. I'm Father Robert Kropak of St. Gwendolyn Parish. I want to take this opportunity to reach out to all of you who are our parishioners and friends. We're certainly living in an unusual moment, and none of us have really experienced a lockdown as we are now. And so we're looking and finding new ways to do things, to be together and to support one another. Since we can't be together physically to pray together or eat or drink coffee as we normally would. Just the other day, or today I think, one of our parishioners was walking by the church with her child and uh, he was looking at the church as you can see in this wonderful little picture. And uh, the caption uh, she sent um, along was, Mom, why can't we go into the church? <laughs> And so I think it's a question on all our minds right now. We want to be together and we can't, so we'll do the best we can. So we've been reaching out to you by email and other means. Uh, Susan Kidd does a marvelous job of reaching out and listening to you via social media. You might have noticed I don't do that. And so I'm grateful to her for her expertise, which is really coming in handy at this moment. One of the problems uh, that we're facing is that information that we have seems to change daily, whether from federal, state, local government, or from church authorities like the Diocese of Cleveland. When we were still able to gather together in church a couple of weeks ago, you know that we tried to instill best practices that were in use at that time. In just 10 days, though, our ability to gather together has been completely curtailed. So I've tried to determine what is best to do um, here at St. Wendell and fully aware of what the diocese and other local parishes are doing. I certainly miss most of all gathering with you for Mass. The Eucharist is our lifeblood and being deprived of that is a real challenge. I'm sure you would agree that TV Masses don't quite substitute, especially what we cannot share in communion together. But we can be in prayer together even as we're maintaining an appropriate distance from one another. And this is quite a distance. So here's what I'm able to do and what we're able to do together. First of all, we can keep praying for one another. We've already sent you some links for daily prayer in the morning. Some links, uh, some of you may have viewed um, the Teze prayer from St. Ignatius last evening. You could even download an app to your phone or tablet called iBreviary if you would like to be praying the Liturgy of the Hours the official prayer of the church with others. There are many other opportunities to visit Mass online. We've sent links to you already for some of those locally, both for weekday Mass and for Sunday Mass. We've looked at the possibility of doing Mass online here, but after some discussion, I feel it would be more advantageous for all of us if I reach out to you with a message a few times a week, seeing as how um, the TV Mass just isn't quite as uh, fulfilling as we would like it to be. However, if you are watching Mass, uh, we will send in an email some uh, prayers for a spiritual communion so that you might join yourself in communion of mind and heart with others. The third thing is we like, we will very likely bring you some portions of the Holy Week ceremonies. Um, the Pope has recently put out some guidelines for what we might do during Easter this year and uh, the beginning of Holy Week on Palm Sunday, uh, we'd very likely do an online blessing of the palms, uh, followed by a distribution of those palms uh, in front of the church or in the church parking lot. More on this and other Holy Week uh, prayer as we go through the next week or so. <laughs> ah! I am missing a page, <laughs> I think. Can you stop? Can we edit this part out? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, there I am. Now I know where it was. Can I continue? Uh, we're looking at the possibility of opening the church. And if Susan puts this online, <laughs> she's in trouble. 
Uh, we're looking at the possibility of opening the church a couple of times a week. Um, right now, with uh, work um, still proceeding in the church, even though there's only one person working, uh, there's a tremendous amount of noise. And so um, it's not possible for us to do stuff during the week too much. Uh, also, there are some uh, cleaning issues we need to be attentive to when people are actually in the space. Um, but we will be uh, trying to find at least a couple of hours a week when you could come to the church for prayer. And uh, as long as there are no more than uh, 10 people in the church and you keep your distance from one another, that will be fine. Uh, the next days and weeks will be challenging on many levels, not just with regard to um, church, but also in our homes. Uh, the diocese is in the process of setting up an assistance fund to enable us to help parish members who might have um, some physical needs, assistance with food, rent, utilities, to mention a few. I'll know more about this at the end of the week and be able to share what some of those things are. If you do have a need, please don't hesitate to call and we'll do the best we can to connect you with uh, resources that might be available. You may be hearing or seeing something in the next few days from the diocese about celebrating the sacrament of penance. Obviously, this creates a challenge uh, for us to celebrate that sacrament, uh, keeping appropriate distance and also trying to maintain privacy. Uh, shouting across six feet is not going to do much good for anyone. Uh, we will address this uh, very soon when I hear more. If there should be a need for any of you to celebrate the sacrament of anointing of the sick, please make sure you call me and I will arrange something with you. Um, you may know that I'm a person in a high-risk group, so depending on what the situation is, I may need to uh, find someone else to do that for you. Please keep in your prayer all those who are sick, dying, and those who are caring for the sick and dying in really so many heroic ways. Pray for first responders who may find themselves in difficult situations. And pray in hope for that day when we will be able to gather again in our beloved church soon and very soon. Pope Francis recently penned this brief prayer uh, to the Virgin Mary on uh, March 11th uh, for specifically the people of his diocese in Rome, but perhaps it will be of comfort to us as well. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the Roman people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. May you have a peaceful and a restful evening, and I will be back with you in a day or so.